It has been a great week for the Fed and the ECB does. It has been a great week for the BOJ hawks as well. US and European stocks are preparing to close this week near record. All investors need right now is a reasonably soft US jobs data. So happy Jobs Friday. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. Yesterday's ECB meeting and Christine Lagarde's press conference both went according to the plan. The European Central Bank left its interest rates unchanged as expected for the fourth straight meeting. It lowered its inflation forecast for this year, for next year and for 2026. It predicted that inflation will reach the 2% target by next year and it suppressed its growth forecast for this year. Still, Kristen Lagarde said that they aren't sufficiently confident in inflation to lower rates, but that they will know a little bit more in April and that they will know a lot more in June. So it was heard as we will start cutting the interest rates in June if inflation continues to ease as predicted. So the dovish message was obviously well received by the market and investors. The Eurozone bond yields fell. The rally in the stock 600 index accelerated. The index hit a fresh record yesterday, traded and closed the session above the 500 mark for the very first time. But, but the euro dollar extended gains above the 109.55 level as the US dollar fell more than the euro did as the Fed President Jerome Powell on the other coast of the Atlantic Ocean reiterated that rate reduction in the US can and will begin this year. So it was really about who sounds more dovish yesterday. So yesterday Powell actually sounded more confidently dovish because he simply said that they are well, waiting to become more confident that inflation in the US is moving sustainably at 2%, that when they get that confidence, they will begin to dial back the level of restriction of the monetary policy. And well, this is the cherry on top. He said that they are not far from it. Woo! So you don't need to repeat such a confident and dovish message twice. So the US dollar index tumbled to the lowest level since January and the US dollar bears now target the 100 psychological mark on expectation that the Federal Reserve is done cooking the idea of a rate cut. They are just waiting for it to cool down a little bit before bringing it on the table. So the smell of that dovish cake sent the S&P 500 to a record high yesterday, of course. Nvidia gained another 4.5%, really, I'm not kidding, the company just added another 4.5% at yesterday's trading session, just like that. Whereas Broadcom, another chip maker, which also jumped more than 4% at yesterday's trading session, fell 3% in the after hours trading after announcing disappointing sales last quarter. Happily, happily, the company highlighted that their AI demand is growing still and well, that's pretty much all that matters right now. Elsewhere, Japanese stocks fell below the 40,000 psychological mark as the dollar yen tumbled below the 148 level on rising speculation that the Bank of Japan could be well, closer to exiting the negative interest rates than many think. The most aggressive BOJ hawks bet that the Bank of Japan will already hike its interest rates at their March meeting, while I think that they could or they will in the best case scenario hint that there could be a rate hike in April. But you never know with the Bank of Japan, Governor Ueda could very well come up and say, no, no, we are not in a rush just yet to raise the interest rates. But for those who are willing to predict the amplitude of a potential move if the BOJ finally decided to act, well, the move in the dollar yen could actually be significant or not. Now, the growing divergence between more hawkish Bank of Japan expectations and more dovish Federal Reserve expectations should back a decline in the dollar yen to at least 140 
level. Then, depending on how hawkish the Bank of Japan sounds, we shall see the dollar yen is to 125-130 range. But be careful because the Bank of Japan will unlikely to raise its interest rates at the same speed than the European Central Bank or the Fed did. Because the chances are that the BOJ will move slowly and that the road below the 140 level could actually be quite choppy. Now, beyond Japan, the rebound in Chinese stocks well began losing steam this week as the Chinese government's 5% growth target and 3% inflation target looked overstretched to investors and yesterday's jump in the Chinese trade numbers were well, mostly ignored by investors as investors actually realized that the boost that they saw was due to the fact that the January and February trade data in China is announced together to avoid the Chinese New Year fall that we might see in activity. But even before that, while the outflows were visible in the iShares MSCI China ETF, which actually saw the biggest one-day outflows on Wednesday this week since last December. So that's the global picture, basically. The dovish expectations are back in Europe and in the US. The probability of a rate cut from the US rose past the 76% level after Jerome Powell's congressional testimony this week. The European Central Bank is expected to raise its rates by 100 basis points starting from June. And China is still struggling despite efforts and stimulus to boosts investor appetite, the US dollar is down and investors are now waiting for the last piece of this week's puzzle, the US jobs data, to close a week that has been packed with economic data and events and speeches. So due today, the US jobs numbers could further boost that dovish enthusiasm or not. Because note that the last two readings were abnormally strong, with NFB reads above 300,000 mark and a chart from BNP actually shows how the recent strong readings from the US jobs market interrupted the downtrend in US payrolls, a downtrend that was in play following the post-pandemic peak. But on the other hand, other metrics like lower job openings or lower quit rates hint that there is actually a normalization and a certain loosening that's going on in the US jobs market. Because look, the quit rates in the US fell below the pre-pandemic average, hinting that the great resignation era that came with post-pandemic times is leaving its place to great stay and that means a possible downward pressure on wages growth moving forward and a softer wages growth means less inflation. And oh, Christian Lagarde in Europe also said that they are seeing the wages pressure ease in Europe as well. So today, back to the US, the expectations are that the US economy has added around 200,000 new non-farm jobs last month and that the monthly average pay increase at a slower speed. The unemployment rate is seen steady at 3.7% level and if the data is sufficiently soft or ideally softer than expected, well the Federal Reserve dose will finish this week on a dominant note. But if we see another month of blowout jobs report from the US, then confusion will reign. But in all cases, what matters the most is obviously inflation. I mean, jobs data also matters because it influences inflation, but inflation matters the most for all the Fed watchers. So even if the US jobs data comes in hot today, if next week's US CPI read is soft enough, well, then investors will simply continue to daydream about that first rate cut. Oh, that first rate cut. So this is all for this week. I'm Ipek Oskar Deshkoye and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments and please do not forget to hit that like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them.
So I will meet you again next week. And until then, good day trading and have a lovely weekend. Thank you.